Welcome to Eden Prayer United Methodist Church. I invite you to join with me in singing our opening song, Welcome. Let's walk together for a while and ask where we begin to build a world where love can grow and hope can enter in to be the hands of healing and to plant the seeds of peace singing welcome welcome to this place you're invited to come and know god's grace all When we will share a feast Where pride and power kneel to serve The lonely and the least And joy will set the table As we join our hands to pray Singing You're invited to come and know God's grace all around. Come, the love of God to share. Cause all of us are welcome here. All are welcome in this place. Please join me in our gathering words this morning. We come together today, hearts bowed and bodies bent, shouting, Jesus, have mercy on us. Just like blind Bartimaeus did, just like the lame and oppressed did, let us have the courage to ask as Jesus asked, what do you want Jesus to do for you? Pray with me, please. Holy One, still us this day to encounter your presence in our worship and in the world. Ready us to hear your voice as it speaks to us in ways that are sometimes dramatic, often ordinary, and always meaningful. Help us also to hear you through each other, and especially through those whom we sometimes, in busyness or pride, forget to listen to. Amen. As we hear the story of Jesus' encounter with Bartimaeus, think about those voices that are hard for you to listen to, or the ones you sometimes ignore. Are they voices of the hurting, of opposite political views? Are they the voices of those who have hurt you? The voices of children, of the elderly, the voices of the poor? or of the rich. Hear now what Jesus does when he encounters a voice everyone else is ignoring. They spent some time in Jericho as Jesus was leaving town, trailed by his disciples and a parade of people. A blind beggar by the name of Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, was sitting alongside the road. When he heard that Jesus the Nazarene was passing by, he began to cry out, Son of David, Jesus, mercy, have mercy on me. Many tried to hush him up, but he yelled all the louder, Son of David, mercy, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped in his tracks. Call him over. They called him. 
It's your lucky day. Get up. He's calling you to come. Throwing off his coat, he was on his feet at once and came to Jesus. Jesus said, what can I do for you? The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. On your way, said Jesus, your faith has saved and healed you. In that very instant, he recovered his sight and followed Jesus down the road. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Amen. Please join with me in singing, When Jesus the Healer. After the murder of George Floyd last summer and the damage caused by the subsequent riots, there was a food desert in South Minneapolis. There were several food drives to help folks out who no longer had a neighborhood grocery store. Like many of you, I was moved to help, and like many of you, I had just received my stimulus check. So I promptly took all my stimulus money to my local, very much open grocery store in my privileged neighborhood and filled my cart with peanut butter and mac and cheese and other things I can't remember right now. I was so focused on the mission at hand that I used the self-check at the aisle at the grocery store because it was quicker, especially when the only open cashier was that chatty one. So I drove my groceries up to Hennepin Tech College where volunteers were collecting them and promptly allowed the groceries to be taken out of my car so I could hurry on to whatever was next in my life. I'm not even sure I opened my window that day because I have this neat little button that pops at the back end of my vehicle open. And so with the push of the button, up came the door and I waved as they grabbed the last bag of groceries out of my car and I was on my way. There was no chance to encounter anyone at the grocery store. I made no room for anyone to ask me why I was buying so many boxes of mac and cheese. There was no chance to listen to the people who were collecting the food. I made no room for a conversation about why they were giving their time to this particular cause. I was in such a hurry, so focused on the mission, there was no opportunity for me to encounter anyone. How often I appreciate that in my life. The self-check line at the grocery store, the drive-through to make prop donations, the ATM machine rather than going inside and talking to a bank teller, texting my sentiments to a friend rather than making the phone call or even maybe the visit. Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem with a group of people who were as busy as you and I are anxious to get from Jericho to the next thing, not understanding what that next thing, what that Jerusalem would bring. They certainly didn't want to be bothered with a chatty cashier or a bank teller or a nobody, like a blind man on the side of the road. When Bartimaeus tried to get noticed, they hushed him up. I'm sure they were frustrated with this man, as they were as frustrated with this man as I get, when I'm in that checkout line before I realize that it's that cashier at the front of the line. I'm incredibly grateful that Jesus, 
who has his mind set on Jerusalem and the very hard thing he has to do there isn't too busy to notice Bartimaeus. I'm incredibly grateful that Bartimaeus knew that he was somebody and wouldn't be silenced by the folks who didn't want to be bothered with him. I'm so incredibly grateful that he yelled all the louder to get the attention of Jesus over the people's attempts to silence him. Bartimaeus was somebody. I'm struck by the fact that he isn't nameless in the Bible. I'm struck by the fact that this isn't just some Bartimaeus, but Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, somebody's beloved child. He belongs to someone. Someone loves him, even if others find him an annoyance. How many times have you ignored an annoying person without recognizing that they are somebody's beloved child, that they belong to somebody, that somebody loves them without condition, and that they are worthy of God's attention and certainly worthy of yours? When we are inclined to ignore the shouting voices, to hush up the protesters, to quiet the advocates, to muzzle the insistent, Jesus models something different for us. He stops in his tracks. He noticed Bartimaeus. He called Bartimaeus over, and he listened to Bartimaeus. Who are the voices you are ignoring? Which voices are we trying to hush up? What is keeping us so focused on the task that we don't have time to listen What would it mean to stop in our tracks and really listen? Jesus not only listens with his ears to Bartimaeus, to Bartimaeus' insistent voice, but Jesus also listens with his heart to Bartimaeus' pain. Jesus did not presume to know what Bartimaeus needed, though it would be easy to assume that he wanted his sight. Maybe... He wanted companionship. Maybe he wanted recognition. Maybe he wanted his identity known. Maybe he just wanted to be noticed. Jesus doesn't assume. He asks. He asks, what can I do for you? And that's when Bartimaeus has what we call agency. He gets to decide for himself what his needs are. And he has agency because Jesus stopped and listened to him without assumptions, without an agenda, but with love and compassion and grace. When the insistent voices around us yell all the louder, do we assume we know what they need? Or do we listen with our hearts too? Do we listen and allow others to have agency? Last summer when the people when people of color in South Minneapolis yelled all the louder some folks many folks wanted to hush them up the language of protest was too loud and messy the language of anger was misunderstood the language of violence was misrepresented some folks many folks assumed they knew what people of color needed and this was another way of hushing them up taking away their agency, their decision-making about themselves, ignoring their pain, their needs, and their very selves. Some folks, many folks, made those assumptions based on their own worldview, based on their own cultural assumptions. Jesus demonstrated another way. Jesus demonstrated the way of making room in ourselves, making space to stop and listen and engage opening our hearts to hear those other voices, listening to the voices on the margins of life, and then acting not on our own worldview or our own cultural assumptions, but acting on their voices and their agency. I remember a time a while ago now when I stopped in my tracks. It was the summer after I graduated from high school. My youth group was on a mission trip in the Cumberland Mountains of Tennessee. Now, in case you don't know, that's a cultural experience. We were coming from Minnesota, and we landed in one of the poorest counties in our country. 
We came with all of our cultural assumptions. We came with our Lake Minnetonka worldview of manicured lawns and lake life, of fast-paced schedules and importance, of privilege and affluence. We were sent to work for people in the community. At one place, we dug a hole for an outhouse where there was no indoor plumbing. At another, we underpinned a trailer home where there was little heating to keep them warm. And on Friday, we landed at a familiar-looking brick home. We made the assumptions from our worldview and our cultural perspective. Why were we at this house anyway? There's no real need here. This person could afford to have work done for them, we assumed. And when we met the woman of the house, we knew she was physically capable of doing all the work we were there to do also. What in the world were we doing here on a mission? The day was filled with small tasks that didn't seem to need us. Weed whacking the ditches around her property, washing a few windows on the inside of the house, and other tasks I don't even remember anymore. What I do remember, though, was the way we were all stopped in our tracks that day. The woman the house was recently widowed. She was lonely. What she needed was companionship. What she needed was to feed people. What she needed was to be listened to. So many voices on the margin are waiting to be listened to. So many are yelling all the louder in hopes of being noticed. How will you listen to them? How will you stop in your tracks and make time and space in your heart? This week, I want to challenge you to stop in your tracks, to listen to a voice on the side of the road, a person of color, a child on the spectrum, a transgender teenager, a divergent political viewpoint, an elderly relative. I challenge you to stop in your tracks and create space in your heart to truly listen to a voice on the margin, to listen not for what you assume about them, but listen for what they need. Amen. Please join with me in singing, Help Us Accept Each Other. Let us pray. Holy God, there are so many voices around us that sometimes we are inclined to ignore them. Our busyness, our apathy, our self-centeredness, our pain, our joy, our messy lives, they keep us from noticing. They keep us from taking the time. They keep us from listening from the heart. Give us the pause, God. Entice us to stop for a moment and listen. Woo us into hearing from the heart the voices of those so easily ignored. And in hearing those voices, give us the courage to respond, not just with thoughts and prayers, but also with love and action. Today, God, we feel nudged by you to pay attention, especially to the voices of the vulnerable, those suffering with COVID, those tired from offering care, those who feel less than because the world has labeled them that way, those who struggle with sexual or gender identity, those who lack the ability to speak for themselves, those who are lonely and isolated, those who are trying to yell all the louder for the voiceless. And we pray today for the hurting, especially those who are suffering because of natural disasters, 
because of hurricanes and tropical storms, because of flooding that is coming with too much rain and the drought that is lingering because of too little rain, and the unsettling life in Haiti because of a recent earthquake. For all these prayers and the ones in our hearts, we lift them all up to you, God, with the words Jesus gave us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to join with me in singing our closing song, Sacred the Body. Friends, your generous support of what God is doing through Eden Prairie United Methodist Church is always welcome. And you can find a place on our website, an online giving tab at prairiechurch.org to give your gifts to the life of the church and the work of the church. I want to encourage you today in particular to consider a special offering for Haiti and for relief from the earthquake. That is a country of poverty and political uh, strife and uh, is very much in need of our gifts. And so you can find a place on our website to give to Haiti, and I encourage you to do that. Now today we're going to bless the backpacks of our children and our youth who are about to head back to school. So children and youth, grab your backpack now and come back here and join me for a special reminder and a blessing of you and your backpack. So kids, I want to ask you today, how are you feeling? And you can, you can give your answer by giving a thumbs up, I feel really great about going back to school, or thumbs down, I'm not very excited at all, or a sideways thumb because you're not quite sure about how you feel about going back to school. I'm really proud of you to um, offer how you're feeling, and I want to tell you how brave it is to share that with others. Going back to school can always be full of big feelings. They, they come along with that going back to school. Those feelings are different for absolutely everyone. Whether you're um, starting school for the first time or moving to a new school or staying at the same school or returning to school in person after learning virtually, we can all feel happy or nervous, scared or curious or something else altogether. And sometimes we can feel all those emotions at the same time, and that's okay. I want you to know, no matter what you're feeling, no matter where you are, God is always with you. No matter where you go and what you do, God is with you to stand beside you and to care for you. So as we start this new school year, I want to give you a special tag for your backpacks um, so that wherever, whenever you look at it, you can remember that God loves you and is always with you no matter what. You can have your parents leave a message in the attendance register on our website, and we'll send one to you. 
along with that backpack tag, I want to share a blessing with you today. Now, a blessing is something that you receive. So you can open your hands like you're going to get a gift today, and you are going to receive a gift called a blessing. As I speak that blessing, I want you to imagine the words dancing and floating and fluttering around you and watch them as they land on your hands and on your backpack. Okay, here's the blessing. May these tags remind you that God is always with you as you sit and as you stand, as you learn and as you play. In every fear and every celebration, may you know God, your friend, is always there. Amen. I hope you children and youth have a blessed school year. Now let us all receive the blessing. May God call you by the sound of a voice on the margin and use you for God's glory so that others can be healed in Jesus' name. Amen.